We see this look from time to time from the Knights. Third down, St. Clair deep drop back. He's going deep down the field. The pass is caught. Wide open, 40, 30. It's Brock Studwell. 15, 10, 5, touchdown, New York. They're going to hand it off to Aide Shaw. He got the first down. A championship is coming to New York. 23 seconds, 22 seconds. What are they gonna do here? Four yards from the end zone. Dunhill gonna throw again. Dunhill out to Hollywood. BDG Hollywood touchdown! Oh my, the Atlanta Swarm. How about it? Your champions, Georgia. 27 to 10 over Sioux Falls. Your Atlanta Swarm are title winners. Uh, to the right, that's Carr. Two down from the end. Hand off, Sandlin. Boy, he almost did go. Almost there got hit go. the backfield, and Sandlin wow. breaks it through for a touchdown for Seattle. What a run from Sandlin. He was dead to rights in the backfield and made something out of nothing. They're going to go five wide for Wigmore. Wigmore steps up, hit as he threw, passes intercepted at the 50 with room to return. It's Albert begin again. 35 30. Albert begin. 20 10. Touchdown, Lone Star. Ivory Irvin, not fast enough this time, and the glory right back in it. Second and 10 from the 38. Marconi back to pass against another blitz. Marconi's going to avoid a sack. Throw a ball deep down the field. The pass is caught. What a throw! What a throw! Touchdown! Minneapolis Tomber on Sabu! Oh my goodness! A slow motion replay here! you got to be kidding me. SFL is going to bring out the uh, trophy and Minneapolis is going to get to celebrate uh, for the fans that came down. Seavers, three to the right side. Tallahassee needs a stop. They haven't gotten one here in the third. And Cochran's going to the end zone. It's cut for a touchdown. And Alaska has nine points here in the third quarter. That's all she wrote, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations to the Alaska Storm. They are your season 11 SFL champions. How about EJ DeQ, Patrick Kelly, and Sean Crooked on that line? Great protection for Jackson. Now Moses is running over people, as are the rest of the Scorpions, and they bite him for a touchdown. This Matt Wilson's pass is caught for a touchdown. What a throw to Dijon Swan. The Mexico City Aztecs, headlined by team owner Ramos Lynn, gets their first. SFL Championship, a 38-24 victory over Chicago. Tonight, Wigmore now 10 of 13, 76 yards, 14 pass of the day. Wigmore fires it outside, it's intercepted! John Barnhart, touchdown! Sioux Falls, he does it again for the Sparrows in the postseason! Showing a blitz on the outside is Queen City. Everyone stays home. Darnell Black runs past everybody. Picks up a block. Darnell Black in the open field. 40, 35, 30. Being chased by Shine. He won't catch him. And the Hyenas have cut it to seven. Mama, there goes that man. The Stats All-Star crew for a terrific start so far. First and or, uh, third down and nine to start the second wow. quarter. Ivory Here. Irvin's over the top, and it's a touchdown for Baltimore. Jark Tarkington has a chance to win it. Oh my goodness. For all of that, and Tarkington gives Baltimore their third straight title. Oh my goodness. Well, McChesney gonna get a carry. Oh, there goes McChesney. One man to beat, he breaks it. Jared McChesney down the sideline, Francis. Trying to catch him. Not today, young fella. Touchdown, Denver, they're right back in it. Down to 15 seconds left. Suli back to pass. He's going to Corky. It is caught. And he puts it Touchdown, D.C. Great Corky. They're going to pull out something miraculous here. D.C. can't let him get behind him. They got to keep everything in front of him here. This is the ball game. Daniel Garcia back to pass. He's going to throw it deep to the middle. The pass is caught. And the tackle is made. And the D.C. Dragons have won the championship by a miracle on Zach Zulli's throw to Greg Corky. And I let the fellas give me a breath.
Good evening, SFL Nation. Welcome to the city of Las Vegas, the home of hot sand, broken dreams, and $5 lobster. Welcome, everybody. We are here tonight at Silver State Stadium as the Las Vegas Fury will be hosting the Denver Nightwings and Vice Wars tonight. I am your play-by-play -play analyst, Chad Rowland, in the studio with me. And tonight, I have my main man, my favorite buddy, Hall of Famer, Mr. Eddie Gage. Eddie, tell the people how you doing, my man. SFL Nation, what up, though? Chad, I know you're, used, you're not used to this just yet, but I had to tell DeMond time and time again, these fans know who I am. I've been signing autographs all morning. I got to the booth just in time. And, and what a great game we had this afternoon. It's Vice Wars. Denver taking on Vegas. This is the 13th meeting all time between these two teams. It's all knotted up at six. Who shall win? Unlucky number 13. Let's find out. Yeah, they're going to be fine for that spot for sure. Denver, no path to the playoffs, but Vegas does indeed have a path to the playoffs as they are one of the top teams in the SFL. Eddie, what does Denver need to do to slow down this furious attack? First of all, one of the main things they need to do is get their tail back, Bailey O'Shaughnessy, involved. Last week, he got shut down 14 yards on 15 carries. Can't put that much pressure on that quarterback. Now they will be indeed trying to put some pressure on him as we will be getting underway here momentarily. This almost feels like the streets are talking, but it's not. So, <laughs> so excited to be in the booth with you, Eddie, and we are getting ready to kick this one off momentarily. Let's get it. Have won the toss and select a kick. And as you can see, this is Vice Wars. So each of them in their specialty Vice Wars uniforms for tonight. As we are getting ready to kick this underway here in the city that never sleeps, Las Vegas, Nevada. And there is the kickoff as that will be received about the three yard line. As that's gonna be taken back to about the 27 and that is going to bring out the quarterback for the Las Vegas Fury, formerly from Denver, Ooh. Eric Price. Eric Price, former Nightwing. I'm sure he had this game circle on his calendar. And we're gonna see a single back set here, two wide receivers at the bottom of the screen. Price looking like he's gonna change the play. Short drop, looking for the out route, finds the out route, and that's going to be a gate of four. Vegas lost last week in someone will call an upset to the D.C. Dragons, trying to get make amends and get back on the winning side of things after winning six straight games. Las Vegas coming here with a red-hot passing offense. They're fourth in scoring at 33 and fourth in passing yards at 337 yards per game. Bunch set down at the bottom. That is going to be the first run of the evening as that is going to be a pretty decent gain there of five and that's going to set up third and short. Not surprising to see them getting Scott Johnson going here early on talking to John Bond last night. Now I was talking to him. He said he wanted to get Scott Johnson a bit more involved in this game. And so far here in the second play of the drive, there they are with a carry. Denver setting up in the 4-3. There's another handoff. It's going to be to the outside, and it looks like it's going to be stopped in the backfield as it's going to be a three and out here for Vegas. Tackle for a loss in the backfield. Three and out, something you don't hear often about this Las Vegas offense. Yeah, Vegas has been high-flying all season long, Eddie. And to see a three and out is kind of a rare occurrence, but let's see... What Denver can do here on the road, this is a tough place to play here in Silver State. That is going to be punted away by Dustin McCrack. And that is going to be received at about the 23. They're going to be taken up to the 25. And that is going to bring out the rookie second round pick here, the 40th overall selection, Gene Struthers. Gene Struthers looking to get in here and make an impact Let's see if they unleash the change on this young man or they try to keep it conservative here early on. One of the main focal points of this offense, Bailey O'Shaughnessy, they'll probably get him the rock quite often. Flip back formation. And there is the first run to Bailey O'Shaughnessy as that's going to be a gain of a couple. Split, flip, pro. 
bringing your tail back right up the middle of the defense, just trying to see, just trying to get, get each other filled out, I guess you could say, here early on. Yeah, it's going to be, I think it's just going to be a back and forth, one blow after another there, Eddie. Two wide receivers set. Vegas may be trying to bring the heat. And it's going to be another handle to a shot. As he looks like he's got some green. He's going to be good past the midfield. That's going to be past the 40 down to about the 39. And O'Shaughnessy getting off the races here as he's taking it down past midfield. 33-yard run by Bailey O'Shaughnessy on that carry alone, Chad. He already has more yards rushing than he had all of last week. Yep, last week did not run the ball particularly well. It was already, awful. <laughs> I was trying to be nice. <laughs> 15 carries, 14 yards last week against Charleston. And he's already off to the races tonight. Three wide receiver free set. It's going to be a free play. That's going to be to the outside. It's going to be caught. And that's going to be probably about the 38. But let's see if they accept the penalty or not, Eddie. I believe they're going to accept this penalty. I'm not a coach. I'm just up here in the booth with you and makeup. But I'm pretty sure they're going to accept this penalty. Wait, you got makeup on? You didn't get any? No, I'm just naturally good looking. What's, what's wrong <laughs> with you? <laughs> that is going to be offsides there on Rury. I guess they're saying I needed it more than you did. I, I guess so. Michael Rury, the seventh, the second season veteran, 61290, jumping offsides early. Probably just a little excited as Vice Wars. Week, week I set here for the night wings and there's oh. gonna be another handoff and that's gonna be stopped right at the line good play there by the defense that was number 50 on the tackle not often you see a team line up in strong jokers and run into the weak side of the defense of the offense excuse me john osiris there on the tackle as that is going to bring out gun straight here Look for the slant route, as that's a favorite staple in SFL playbooks. There it Indeed, is. it is slant route. Over the middle. That is going mm. to be incomplete. Intended for Riley Quintero. Jimmy Vega is no longer the coach of these Denver Nightwings. When he was here, that was a staple of his offense. And although he's gone, everything remains the same. They keep it in their playbook as well. Yeah, a lot of SFL playbooks have that play in there it's effective look at on this the, situation the offense is on the field yep the offense is on the field again here three wide receivers play fake action handoff and he's going to be hit as he throws that is incomplete well i'm just as surprised as you are but uh i i think what happened there it's, that was actually third down. Yeah. The, the, the penalty threw a, threw a both of us off. Yeah, the penalty threw us off a little bit. Not sure what's going on. Scoreboard score bug is... Tripping. Can't really see what down it is. It's tricking us. That is going to set up the punt here as... Oh, oh it oh, is blocked. blocked! It is blocked! And they're going to be set up a good field position here. Excellent start field position after that blocked punt. And that is exactly what they needed after that last drive where they went three and out. Mm. Let's see First if they take, take advantage of this situation. First to 10 from the 48. Two wide receiver, two tight end set here. Look like they're going to bring pressure from the ends. Price looking over the middle, finds his target. That is going to be a gain of nine as that was to the tight end. Not many teams you see run 90-yard slants out of ace personnel, but Vegas apparently has it in their playbook. And let's go through the Fury offense. Eric Price, Hubba Kimbrell, Scott Johnson, Mason Kirby, Doug Britton, and Prince Wonder, your wide receivers. John Blades and Jackson Roberts are the tight ends. Second and one from the 40. Look Price out. Steps up, and he is taken down. That is a sack right there, and that's going to be setting up third and long. Third and four, this is going to bring up and uh, wow, talk about, I mean, it looked like he had great pass protection. And then out of the blue, that that protection just evaded. 
That was a big time play there by Ivor Barbatov. Three wide receiver set at the bottom of the screen. Denver looking like they might bring some pressure. Price, short drop, looking to the, sw to look to the swing pass. Great Not successful. Speed. Great speed there, as you indicated, Eddie, and that is going to be fourth down, and they're going to have to punt it away again. I mean, talk about going from a zero to 100 real quick, Chad. As soon as a quarterback released the football, the defender came running over to make that tackle. That was the seven-season veteran Ron Hoff. There. Look out! Oh, hey, look at Hoff! Oh, almost blocked! Man, that would have been two times in a row, Eddie. That had been crazy. <laughs> and look at this punt, though. They are going to be down at the five, and Denver's going to have some work to do. Yeah, and Justin McCrack showing the entire SFL nation why he's a consistent member of the SFL All-Star Game. If you're new to the SFL, the Simulation Football League combines traditional sports, esports, and a role-playing game into one. Team strategies are being executed in real time by our simulations as real-life players compete on a virtual gridiron. For more information about the SFL, visit our website at simulationfl.net. Strong power formation, strong eye formation. Here it's going to be a run up the middle, and Eddie, it looks like after that gain of three, they are just going to be focusing on Bailey O'Shaughnessy here. They are, and that's the second time now here in this first quarter we've seen Denver come out in this strong joker set yet run into the weak side of the offense. wonder if they saw something on film to make them think they can get away with that. Let's see how it turns out for them as this game progresses. Scouts from Denver may have seen something that a lot of people haven't seen. Second and seven from the nine. Struthers drops back, oh. and that is going to be caught. Man, I thought that might have been jump for a pick there, but he gets a gain of about three. Yeah, Jeremy Mosley had 10 catches just last week. Looking to continue that trend, but he had a receiver to the outside. I think that was Riley who he had open on the edge. Third and three from the 12, split back formation here for the Nightwings. Look for O'Shaughnessy to get the ball. Mm. He's going to drop back. Pressure's coming to him. He gets the ball away, and oh, oh that was almost intercepted. I don't know how Shad Allen did did not intercept that ball. It looked like it was in his hands, and he dropped it as the as the, the receiver was underneath his legs, and perhaps was thinking about his own safety. But that should have been an interception. Yeah, when you get that opportunity, Eddie, you know better than anybody. You got to make that play. Yeah. What I don't know is whether anybody is taking it back to the house. That's true. You do not know much about that. <laughs> And that is going to be punted away from just the beginning of their end zone. Good punt. Yeah. As that is going to be taken up to the 45. And I'll tell you, a punter in this league can do a lot of damage. Punters are people too, Chad. They are people. You're absolutely right. Got to show some love to the punters. Dustin McCrack was an important reason of why Vegas beat Arizona back, I believe, in season 17 when he had three punts inside the five. Four wide receivers out of the gun formation. They're running back to his right. There's the fake. Price looking deep down the middle. Wow. Finds his man wide open. He's going to walk in. Touchdown, Vegas. Gun quads left. 50Z deep post. It's a staple of the Las Vegas offense. You have to have plays near the defendant. This time, Denver was looking for 90 yard slants, but they brought the corner down into the box. But Vegas had bigger dreams. They were thinking of the end zone the entire time. And Doug Gritton, who was last season's number three receiver, is now the number one, and he's been paying dividends for him all season long. Yeah, coming into this game, Eddie, I mean, Doug Gritton, 75 catches, sixth in the SFL, over 1,100 yep. yards, third in the SFL. And in the top five in touchdowns, I mean, the guy going from a three to a one, you don't see that very often, but when you do, I mean, he is making the most of his opportunities as that is going to bring out the kicker here for the extra point. As Matt Rage has got a good snap, good hold. The kick is up, and it is good. So Vegas striking first here in Vice Wars, seven to nothing. Vegas actually has two wide receivers in the top ten in catches and targets. These guys, I don't know. It's they do they do not get paid by the hour. And if you gotta have any aspirations of defeating this team, you gotta defend a deep ball. Yeah, Mason Kirby coming into the game was actually 12th in receptions. 
And that is going to be kicked away to Denver. Let's see how they respond as they're going to take it out of their own end zone. As he's going to get past the 20, tries to do a little juke move, but doesn't get very far after that, up to the 22-yard line. Denver looking to respond here on the road through the first quarter, but you do not want to dig yourself a, a hole playing this Las Vegas offense. Nope, and so far it's really just been the Bailey O'Shaughnessy show. Four attempts for 38 yards, on a, and his longest was 33. So really after that big long run, Eddie, they've kind of shut him down in here in this first quarter. That is going to be a handoff to O'Shaughnessy. He's not really going to he makes the most out of it there, getting a gain of four. Loving the downfield vision there that O'Shaughnessy had, Eddie. Yeah, so some great patience on that run as well, as there was nothing up the A gap. Kind of stopped on a dime, hit the C gap, and picked up four. That is going to bring up second and six. Three wide receivers set at the top of the screen. Short drop, looking for that out route. It was tipped away, incomplete pass. That was Devin King there on the deflection. Denver continues to try and force feed their tight end, Jeremy Mosley, and that's the second time that ball was almost batted away trying to get the ball to him. And that was actually my mistake, Day Drury on the deflection. Same number. <laughs> third, <laughs> third and six here from the 26. Vegas looking like they're going to try to press up a little bit. Struthers looking to, for that same out route. It is caught. Mosley first down. Got a man down. Or was that a penalty? But the clock has stopped. Oh, Looks there is like a penalty. penalty. Yep. Late hit. Number 43. Late hit. Late hit. Yeah. Late here on Vegas, Maurice Lloyd, she commits her first penalty. Yeah, Jeremy Mose was already on the ground and pretty much gave himself up. But uh, don't tell Maurice Lloyd that because she came over there and laid the wood on him. Oh, wow. Yeah, that could have hurt him. Yeah, that could have hurt. I mean, I'll tell you what, that little out route right there, Eddie, they've been trying to throw that pretty much the entire first quarter right there. Yeah, that's three times we've seen them dial up that route. Let's see if that continues and see if Vegas maybe tries to pick that one off. Struthers, deep drop, looking over the middle, finds his Ooh. target. That's a first down and more. That is McDowell after the 37. Man-to-man -man defense, and they find the seam, hit the hole, and pick up about 13 yards on the play. Right in yeah, front of the that. quarterback's vision. Can't help but find him. Yeah, that space was just wide open. Nobody there in the middle. McDowell just takes advantage of it. There's a good shot there of Bailey O'Shaughnessy. One of the premier running backs in the SFL. Three wide receivers set out of the gun. Struthers. Look out. And that's going to be tipped away, almost intercepted. They they saw that out route coming, Eddie. They did. First of all, they made two mistakes there. You run the outside, uh, an, an, excuse me, an out route to the short side of the field. And second, the ball is late getting out of Gene's hands. That should have been a pick, a pick six right there. Yep, Justin Versailles saw that play coming from a mile away. Just could not get both hands on it. Was able to get one. Weak eye tight end flex here. Second and 10 from the 37. That is going to be a handoff to O'Shaughnessy. Mm. And does not get anywhere at all. That's going to be a tackle for loss there. Day Drury there making it third and 12. Day Drury, in my opinion, is one of the better linebackers in the SFL. He gives Arizona Scorpion fans fits. Right. I know him all too well. Yep, being in the same division, you guys have seen each other quite often. Gun straight. Third and 12 from the 38. Look like Vegas there in a dime, 3-2. That's going to be to the outside. That is all by himself. Oh, man, I'll tell you what, I thought that was a completed pass, Eddie. I, they're going to challenge that because he got both feet down, not just one, but two. I'd be shocked if they, if they don't throw a challenge flag right here, Chad. And there and it is. There it is. There's a challenge call. Yeah. You will see this replay. He got yeah. both feet down. Actually, that'd be Stephen Stephon Ford throwing the challenge flag. Stephon Ford's newly appointed coach took over play calling about three weeks ago, and you can see right there he got both feet down. Oh yeah, hundred percent. 
100%. But let's see what R62 says. As he is going to overturn that. So that will be a catch. That will be a first down. And that was Riley Quintero there, Eddie, on the catch. Yeah, another young man who victimized the Scorpions with that kickoff return for a touchdown in the waning moments of the playoff game a few seasons ago. 24-yard reception there for Quintero. Gun straight once again from the 17. Slant routes. Struthers looking, and that is going to be intercepted. Goodbye. That looks like Justin resided. He He's gone. is gone. He is past the 40 to the 30 to the 20. Nobody, Eddie, is going to catch him. Touchdown, Vegas. Justin Rezac gets his third interception on the season, and you are going to believe this, but all three interceptions have been returned for touchdowns. The first one came in week one versus Queen City, and the women of owners of that game to win the ball game, and here he gets a two-score lead against his division rival, Denver Nightwings. I mean, to have three interceptions in a season is pretty good. But to have three and they all been returned for touchdowns? <laughs> like, man, that's just, that's insane. I know nothing about that. Yeah, I'm too soon. <laughs> too soon. <laughs> so that is going to set up Denver. That's going to set up Vegas here with the extra point. Matt Rage is going to come out. And so far, I mean, Vegas has been looking pretty solid here at home. They have, Denver had a nice drive going. They marched all the way down the field showing patience, but then they made an ill-advised decision and Justin Reside made them pay for it. Yeah, usually in that gun straight situation on that slant route, Eddie, usually you don't, a lot of times you don't go for that top receiver, the one that's out there by themselves. Usually you go for one of the three in the group, but that time they went to the receiver on that lone side and it cost them. It did, but uh, Denver, they have to shake off the rust and the cobwebs and get their head back in the game. It's still the first quarter, a lot of football left, but you got to try to put all that behind you. Yep, Gene Struthers going to have to just have short-term memory as that's going to be taken out past the 20 to the 23. And let's go through this Denver Nightwings offense. Gene Struthers, a quarterback. Bailey O'Shaughnessy is the running back. R.E. Mills is the fullback. William McDowell, Riley Quintero, Logan Keel, and Dylan Lewis are your wide receivers. Jeremy Mosley is your tight end, and Gene Benazzi is on the offensive line. And that's going to be first to 10 from the 23. Let's see what Denver's offense can do. Maybe they try to stick to more to the ground, and they do indeed start off there. There's a broken tackle by O'Shaughnessy, but he gets a gain of about a yard. Bailey O'Shaughnessy getting no help right now from his offensive line. To make some room for him, he got the left guard pulling, and he runs right past the, ta right. The, the the linebacker who made the tackle. Yeah, he had to use all of his strength to get past that first tackle. That's for sure, Eddie. Single back formation, three wide receivers at the top of the screen. Vegas playing back a little bit, but they may start bringing pressure. Struthers, short drop, mm. looking, finds the out route. That is a good route there, and that's going to be a first down there, Eddie. Had to come back to the ball as it was man-to-man -man defense. That looked kind of ugly for a moment there. I didn't think he would get the ball to him, but Logan Keel kept his feet in bounds, come up with the catch, and picks up a first down. A season 18 All-Star in Logan Keel. Nine seasons in the league, eight of them here in Denver. Struthers drops back with over the middle. That is caught by the tight end, Jeremy Mosley, and that's going to be another first down. Jamie Mosley gets a lot of targets, a lot of catches, and uh, Will Todd has got to be shaking his head trying to figure out why he can't get some of those looks. He's in the wrong uniform in the same division. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> that may be why. First, <laughs> first and 10 here, under a minute to go. Split back formation. Vegas look like they might bring some pressure. They anticipate the run, but Struthers is going to pass. It's going to be over the mm. middle. Man, that was a little bit of traffic there, but look at Mosley with another catch. It sure was a, a, check, a catch in traffic indeed. I'm not sure what he was looking at because Logan Kill was wide open on the shallow cross would have picked up a few extra yards as well. Yeah, it looked like the, the linebacker there just closed right on him. Strong power eye formation here. 
Second and five. That's going to be mm. Anil O'Shaughnessy and stopped at the line. Vegas with another good stop there on the run game. Into the first. And that is going to do it here for the first quarter. Vegas coming out slamming so far, 14 to nothing. We'll be back here on SFL on YouTube. And we are back here in Silver State Stadium in Las Vegas, Nevada. Chad Rowland, Eddie Gage in the booth. Justin Reside going lone wolf on me in the stats truck. Thank you, Justin. Once again, Cameron Irvine on the production side. Third and five from the 49. Struthers drops back looking over the oh. middle. Incomplete. There was some pressure right there around Mosley. Wasn't able to get his hands on it. It was. 50 tight end seam. They came what looked like. I couldn't tell if it was two corners. Well, man to man, but nonetheless, it's going to be good defensive effort, and they're going to force Denver to punt this ball away yet again. Yeah, it looks like Denver's been really focusing a lot in the, in the up the middle routes there, especially with Mosley. Let's see if Vegas can actually try to stop that even more defensively, and that's going to set up the punt here. As that's going to be fair caught at about the 14, and Eric Price and the company is going to come out once again here in the second quarter. Backed up deep into their own end. Let's see if Denver can force a punt and get this ball back to their offense. There's a good shot there of Mason Kirby, one of the legends of the SFL. Three wide receivers at the top of your screen. Vegas, one thing they have not really done much is run the ball. Price using the swing pass and it's mm. caught, and that's going to be a nice little spin move there. Is that's going to be a gain of four? If you can't get him involved in the running game, make him a part of your passing game. Just as another dimension to this offense that you have to worry about. You can't just worry about the deep ball, the intermediate passes. God Johnson's catching passes underneath as well. Yep, and this team actually has two halfbacks. They have Scott Johnson and Hubba Kimbrell. Yep, Kimbrell has not gotten any touches tonight. And that is going to be a mm. handoff up the middle. And look at this. And Scott Johnson gets the first and a little bit more up to the 27. I was wondering what John Bond, head coach and owner of this Vegas team, was referring to when he said he was going to get Scott Johnson involved a bit more. Don't recall him running the ball out of this set, but we've seen it run him twice tonight so far. Yeah, and so far I think it's been effective, at least on that run it did. And that's going to be another first down here for the Fury. Will Todd is in the chat. I see you, Will. There he is. Four wide receivers set out of the gun. There's the fake handoff. Price looking to the outside. Fine. Oh, oh had it. he had it in his hands. Prince Wonder. And incomplete. The rookie with the drop. That's something he normally comes down with. I've seen him make tough catches a few times this season. I need to hold on to that one, though. Vegas with the 10th overall selection, selected Prince Wonder. 6'4", 185, and he makes a drop there. Second and 10 from the 27th. Single back formation again. Price looking, swing pass. Caught, and look at Johnson with the spin move to try to get a little bit more, but that's going to set up third and seven. You said Prince Wonder is six feet four, 185 pounds? If that man turns sideways, you may not see him. Yep, paper thin. Paper thin. Paper thin. <laughs> Get in the weight room, young man. Just go hit a McDonald's or something, Mike. Get some <laughs> weight on you. I got plenty I can give you. Third and seven from the 29. Price with the fake hand. Look off. out. He's going to try to avoid. Oh, look at this. And he got void of the first one, but not the second one. As Devin King there with the, with the sack, and that's going to set up fourth down combo inside zone they took the defensive tackle and actually dropped him back into coverage chad not sure if you saw that it's the second time they doubt up that play today that i've seen and it just adds another passing lane for the quarterback to try to fit the ball through yeah that combo inside zone it's an, it's an interesting it's an interesting defensive set right because if i remember correctly you can tell me better that's where the inside linebacker is one that comes up and blitzes in right that is correct so that is why we've seen Devin King up there getting a sack. We we have seen that ran in Indianapolis before, and Adam Wiseman actually had three sacks in one game with it. Yeah, so it our, came, 
I remember that game. I remember that game. We've seen Baltimore use it as well. So that is going to set up first and 10 here from the 35. There's a shot of Max Jackson there. I'm sure we'll call his name later on. I'm sure we will. Gun straight here for the Nightwings. Highest paid safety in the SFL. Hands down. And that's going to be thrown Boom. over the middle. And what a dime right there to William McDowell. And I got to tell you, Eddie, that was a darn good throw there by Gene Strutter. It sure was. And I don't know. I, was that Max Jackson who was closing in on him? I think it was. Oh, yeah. Wow. Just fit it in there. My goodness. What a great throw. And he had a small window, and he fit it in there indeed. That is why he was one of these quarterbacks selected in this past SFL draft. Three wide receivers set here. Struthers drops back, looking over the middle, finds his target on the slant. That's going to be a first down to the 34. Eddie and they're going to go up. no huddle. Yes, they are. Raleigh Contero on the reception. Struthers maybe trying to change something at the line here. Struthers drops back, looking over the middle again, finding mm. his target. That was Dylan Lewis there with his first catch of the night. They like what they see. First and 10 for the 23. Struthers looking, finds, finds Mosley there on the little out route, and that's going to set up second and three, and they're going to keep this drive going. No huddle. Mosley looks tired. You get the man's Gatorade. Struthers drops back. Look out. In the end zone and tipped away, and that's mm. going to be incomplete. And they're going to still go no huddle, Eddie. <laughs> Amazing. They're trying to force feed Mosley, and it's going to lead to disaster. They keep doing so. They might be getting worn out here. Once again, Struthers drops back, looking short, finds his target. That's a first down, and they're going to still keep going, Eddie. <laughs> yeah, it mostly looks exhausted. <laughs> he, he's, get the tank ready. Struthers drops back, looking for the swing pass, finds it. Bailey uh, O'Shaughnessy gets out of bounds, and finally, they are going to stop. And Jeremy Mosley is going to have to get some air. Oh, yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he runs to the sidelines and, and asks for the backup to come in and give him a blow because he looked exhausted just getting back to the huddle. But what that does, though, Eddie, is that's going to – let's see how Vegas' defense reacts. they got to be tired as well. Oh, absolutely, especially those defensive linemen. And this is exactly the idea. Pound the rock with Bailey O'Shaughnessy yep. with that tired defense. Touchdown. And he's just going to walk in. Touchdown, Denver. Got to be refreshing to get Jerry Mosley going here. Excuse me, Jerry Mosley. Bailey O'Shaughnessy going here in his first half after being shut down last week versus Charleston to come out here and make a statement thus far has got to feel good for their confidence. And that was crazy, though, because I was literally just getting ready to say, and I, that's why I said it at the beginning of that call, was this is the time to pound the rock. <laughs> and they indeed do. O'Shaughnessy with his ninth attempt of the night, 56 yards, and the first touchdown of the day for the Nightwings as we probably will see a shot down on the sideline of Jeremy Vega running down to give Moses yeah. some water after that. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> and the kick is up, and it is good. So Denver inching a little bit closer here in this Vice Wars game, 14-7. to While he's grabbing that water, he needs to grab some Gatorade and oxygen mask as well. And, Eddie, I got to tell you, this is what I'm actually pumped up about, the Esseville Convention, my man. Yes. We are pumped up for that. That is going to be in Cincinnati, Ohio. Only an hour and a half from yours truly. July 28th through the 30th for season 21 kickoff weekend. For room reservation details and the weekend schedule, see the convention alerts channel in the SFL Discord. Rooms are going fast. Reserve your special group rate today. We will see you there. And I will be there. I know that Eddie will be there as well. I will. I've already paid for my plane tickets. I already got my hotel room booked, although I would not be staying at the same hotel because I get reward points. And, uh, oh, yeah, it's a little perk, but I'm kind of running out because I don't travel as much as I used to. But I look forward to hanging out with you guys. Yeah, I mean, it's not often you get to rub elbows with the Hall of Famers, and that's indeed what the convention will do. And that is going to be oh. a run with Scott Johnson. Look at the spin moves, trying to be like BDG Hollywood, and he gets a gain of eight. <laughs> and... <laughs> I tell you what, they made a game-saving tackle right, excuse me, a touchdown-saving tackle on that last spin attempt because had he beat him, it would have been a full race to the end zone. Oh, yeah, he would have been gone, 100%. 
The running backs looking pretty decent so far tonight, Eddie, as Scott Johnson there with his fifth carry of the night. They said we they would get him involved. Weak eye formation here for... Strong eye. The strong eye, thank you very much. Is that going to It's going to be set up to the 40. Thank you, Edward. No problem. I'm a team player. That play was designed to go outside, but Vegas did a great job of forcing him back inside. But he, nonetheless, he picks up the first down. Excuse me, Denver. Every time I, This is the second time I've caught a Vice Wars game, and these uniforms always throw me off. Yeah, they're throwing me off a little bit too, but it's okay. I mean, we're we're good with that. I mean, I'm gonna get. I am probably not gonna get all formations correct with Eddie in the booth, but thank you, Eddie, for picking me up. On this is gonna be a handoff oh. to the running back, and he is stopped right at the line—a gain of nothing there. Might have last lost about a half a yard there. Tight trooper, right, strong stretch, another staple of Vegas' offense, and that play has victimized me a couple of times. Man, I, it is a. It is just a joy to be in the booth with you. Knowing your SFL knowledge, it's amazing. I do what I can. Here it is again. Second and 10 from the 40. Price drops back, oh. looking short over the middle. And oh, man, I thought he tipped that. And it actually ended up being a catch, and that's going to set up third and short. I don't know how that ball was not at least batted down because it looked like he had a beat on it to probably take it to the end zone. Man, what a play there. John Blades with his first catch of the night. And we all know what John Blades can do. He's a very dangerous man. Bryce, Look out. looks like he got hit as he oh, thrown. He did. Ooh, that looked like a floating duck. I mean, that thing was just, I don't even know what happened there. But nevertheless, they do get the catch, and that's going to be another first down for Vegas. Well, it floated out there because he was hit as he threw, and there's got to be nothing more frustrating as a defensive coordinator than to see the quarterback get hit, the ball get off out of his hands and complete it. Frustrating yeah, indeed. Yeah, because as a D coordinator, I mean, your defense did everything that they were supposed to do. They got to the quarterback and just got lucky with that throw. There is going to be a handoff to the running mm. back, and that is going to be just a gain of about three as Stephon Forge makes the tackle. Scott Johnson already, I mean, John said it. I, I didn't quite believe him, but Turns out he said the truth this game as Scott Johnson has been involved. That was his seventh carry already of this ball game. Two wide receivers set at the bottom of the screen. Here's slot right. Price looking. Finds the back of mm. tight end, and that's going to be set up for third and two. Did not look like a backup to me. He had quick speed and burst. Roberts, number 88, with the reception. Yeah, and you talked about this rushing attack there of John Bond wanting to get more involved. I mean, Vegas is 23rd in the SFL in rushing yards per game at 66, so it's nice to see them kind of shake things up a little bit. There's that pair slot right once again. Third and gun, two. Gun ace trips. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Play action. Play Look action out. Pass, and he's going to get taken down at midfield. Actually, they're going to mark him at the 46, and that is going to set up fourth down. Vegas' defense coming through. And Denver had that played up very well. That's a, another staple of their offense as they send a slot receiver on a stutter go. And he's burned me a couple of times with that play as well. Got to be prepared. Yep, got to be 100% prepared on that. Vegas will be punting this one away. And let's see if McCrimmon gets deep. Oh. And, oh, man, I thought he was going to be able to make that, get it down, but they did not, and that's going to take it out to the 20 where Denver will be looking to try to tie this ball game up. After starting off down 14, nothing in the blink of an eye, they came back and scored, and now with 245 left in this contest, having an opportunity here to tie this ball game up. First and 10 from the 20. the middle and that's going to be just a gain of a yard there for Bailey O'Shaughnessy. Kind of surprising to see Denver continue to run that ball to the weak side of their offensive line. You got two tight ends off to the left. Bunch set here on second down. Tight bunch. Got Mosley there at the top. 
is going to be to the outside, and that is going to be a gain of just a couple as that's going to set up third and five. Third down and five. You got to pick up this first down if you're a Denver Nightwing fan. You do not want to give this ball back to Vegas with an opportunity to extend their lead. And the crowd here getting pumped up here for third down. Third if and I'm five. Denver, I don't even snap this ball before the two-minute warning. And they do snap it. Struthers drops back, looking for the out route, finds it. That's a first down to Quintero. And that is going to be the two-minute warning here in Las Vegas as they still have the lead, but Denver was able to get a score there. So the score will be 14-7. to seven. And you see that nice little route there by Quintero. You just pointed out what I was going to hand on. Riley Quintero is only 5 foot 11. And one of the strengths, one of the positives about being a shorter receiver is that able to get in and out of the breaks very quickly. He, he hit the top of his route, stopped on a dime, hit the out, hits with the first down. Heavy step formation here for the Nightwing, suggesting a run. And it is indeed, as that's going to be, oh man, they had an opportunity to backfield. And look at O'Shaughnessy breaking <laughs> tackles. He gets the first down and just a little bit more out to the 45. That was only a run of about 13 yards, but I'll tell you, he, man, someone collect that highlight tape because that was an excellent run by Bailey. I thought he was out of there, Chad. Yeah, I mean, they had him in the backfield. I mean, 100%, he was down, and he finds a way to not only get positive yardage, but get the first down. First and 10 from the 45. Another mm. handoff, and he's stuck in the backfield that time. A gang of fury there with the tackle. Yeah, and that time his offensive line yet again provided him no push. Gene Bonazzi off on his left, but they ran to his right. Got no help from his offensive line. That was O'Shaughnessy's 11th carry of the night. Triple bunch this time, Chad. Single back formation, Struthers. Drops back's got time, oh. finds his receiver past the first down marker. And, and that's going to be at the 40, and they're going to go hurry up. Nice reception by Logan. Struthers drops back, out route to the tight end, finds Mosley, he gets out of bounds, and the clock will stop at 43 seconds to get him. I can only hope that Will Todd went and took a break, grabbed a sandwich, and maybe went to go kiss his wife or something. But right now, that tight end is just putting on a clinic out here on how to get involved in the offense. And just in case if Will is gone and he comes back and he wants to hear this, seven catches for 62 yards tonight for Jeremy Mosley. <laughs> Thanks, Chad. <laughs> Second and four from the 34. Looking to the outside, finds mm. his man. That's going to be just short of the first down, as that's going to be third and one. Raleigh Quintero now with two catches on this drive alone. Trying to close out the half with points. It does indeed look like Will Todd was in the chat, so he heard that. He All did. Right. <laughs> I love you, Will. I promise you I'm trying, bro. That's what he says. 30, 30, <laughs> 31 from the 31. Watch for a weak look. ISO. They're going to try to maybe take this up the middle. Let's see what they do. It's going to be a pass. And that's going to be over the middle. Man, that was in a gang of fury right there. There's three of them around him. And that's going to be fourth and one. Trying to hit the fullback, R.E. Mills, on the nine route. But um, they are known for their hands. And in tough traffic with defenders all around them, it's no surprise he wasn't able to come up with that catch. And here they are. Gene is still on the field on fourth down. Let's see what they do. I actually like this idea, Eddie. Fourth and one, you're on the road. Let's see what they do. And there's a jump off Got side. Him. They're going to get the first down. I think O'Shaughnessy would have had it anyway. And actually, that was not O'Shaughnessy on the run. Yeah, he was on, a, he was on the sidelines taking a break, getting some air, recuperating. But nonetheless, they forced a jump, which is also going to stop the clock, and they would, they would not have to burn a timeout. And that was Sammy Yeager, the three-season veteran there with the jump. Not can't have idea. that. No, you cannot have that at all. I mean, you had Denver stopped. And they get a free opportunity here to maybe even try to tie this game and get the momentum going oh. into half. Look at James Struthers trying to command the huddle. You see that confidence he walked out of that huddle with? Look like a man with ice in his veins. High formation set here. Vegas may be bringing the heat. 
Looking to the swing pass, they find the fullback this time. R.E. Mills in his first catch, and Denver's going to call their first timeout. Their first timeout, Burn, he was unable to get out of bounds. Vegas did a great job protecting on the back end, forced Gene to dump that ball off to his fullback. Yep, the coverage downfield was there, had to go to that swing route there with R.E. Mills. And that's going to set up second and seven. And there is Max Jackson. We saw him there on the screen. Tight end flex. Struthers. Drops back with your over the middle. Finds Logan Keel. And that's going to be down to the 11. And Vegas, or Denver, I'm sorry, is going to use their second timeout. We just talked about Max Jackson a moment ago. And here, he and Charlotte Allen both were lined up about 15 yards off the line of scrimmage giving their cornerbacks absolutely no help over the middle. And it's amazing that they were unable to corral him and not pick up bigger yards because Max Jackson was acting like he was scared that he was going to get beat deep. And that would be a rare occurrence. <laughs> Denver thinking seven. They're not going to think three here. Tied in there in the slot. Struthers looking for the out route, finds it. That's Logan Keel, and he does get the first down, Eddie, and they are down at the one-yard line. Down at the one. He almost got in, just could not quite muscle his way in there, but great job getting out of bounds. 50 tight end scene. We see him down that play up a number of times today, and this time it's going to put him down at the one. 19 seconds left. Can they put up points and tie this ball game up? I mean, you got to give credit there to Logan Keel, the veteran, to know to get out of bounds, to save that timeout, because you're probably going to run the ball right here as Vegas is going to bring the pressure up the middle. Struthers looking, pump fake, over the middle, oh. finds his man. That's the tight end, Jeremy Mosley. Touchdown, Denver. And I was shocked when he dropped back to throw the pass, Chad, and I was even more shocked that ball was completed because there are about three defenders right in Mosley's lap. Look at him. But he's so big and tall and strong as a tight end. Ran that curl route, turned around at his, at his quarterback, and the ball was right in his face. As soon as he turned it around, and we're an extra point away from a tie ball game, Chad. Yeah, I mean, I, the pump fake was, I was like, wow, he pump faked it. <laughs> because yeah. I was like, that, that was kind of surprising. I figured that might end up in a pick, but it ends up going into Mosley's hands. And Denver, pending the extra point here, is going to tie this ball game up to end the half. Amazing. Got to love the SFL. Yep, and this is one of the storied rivalries in all the SFL, and we're getting a good game here so far in the first half, Eddie. Tie game up, but Denver cannot take a break and relax because they got Doug Britton back there, who has victimized SFL teams throughout his entire career. Yep, Doug Britton is one of the better return men in all of the SFL. And that is going to be kicked away to them as they're going to take it from about the two. And he's going to get past the 20, and they're going to get him down at the 28-yard line. So that's going to give Vegas 11 seconds here. Do they just run this out, Eddie, or do you think they try to do something? Nah, John Bond, <laughs> he reminds me of Vancouver back when Andy was coaching him full time. He does not get paid by the hour. I would not be surprised if he tried to chuck this ball deep. And they are indeed in gun straight formation here. But maybe let's see what they do. Maybe see a 50XA post play. Combo strong. Yep. Skin. Oh, there There's it is. Yeah, but look at this. He is deep down the sideline. And if, man, I'll tell you what, why are they mm. not calling a timeout? There's the timeout. <laughs> and that was a great route ran there by the receiver. Combo inside zone again. It was ran, and that's one of the risks you take running that play because the corners are on an island out there with no safety help. And besides that, there's some things that go on that I don't have time to explain about that defensive play that I am just not a fan of. Yeah, you do leave your back end of that defense vulnerable, and you do see what happens when you do that. They get the deep route. So that is going to set up. A little throw here into the end zone, as we like to call the Hail Mary. Yep. From the 48-yard line. And Price oh. avoids the, avoids the sack. He throws it deep in the end zone, tipped away, and oh, oh, man, that was tipped up in the air. I thought there was an opportunity for him to catch it. Ron Hoff with a deflection. I thought it was, too. I did not catch the receiver, but the ball was deflected, and it hit him right in the hands, and he dropped it. 
Yeah, I mean, they were, I mean, he was right there to catch it. And that is going to do it here for the first half. Tie ball game, Eddie. 14 all here in Vegas. Tie ball game going into the half. And the way this game started out, it looked like that Vegas would run away with it. But Denver fought back after being down 14 0. As you said, got a tip of tie ball game. He just started the third. And look at that. Look at the total yards right there, Eddie. 276 for Denver compared to 124 for Vegas. I mean, yeah. they do have a pick six that gave them seven points. But really, I mean, Denver, for being two and seven, has played fantastic. And look at this return, Eddie, as he's going to get it down to the 36. And that sets up good field position here for the Nightwings. For a moment there, he looked like. <laughs> Riley Quintero running that kickoff back, trying to do his best Riley Quintero impersonation. But like you said, down at the 36-yard line, good starting field position for Denver. And Gene Struthers coming out here for the first time in the second half. 22 of 31, 203 yards, a TD, and a pick tonight. 71% completion has been looking very good so far against this really good Vegas defense. That's going to be a run up the middle. Goes absolutely nowhere. Osiris leading the charge. That's going to set up second down. And for Bailey O'Shaughnessy, it's been either hit or miss. He's either tackled for no gain, a yard loss, or he's squared out the backfield for 8 to 10 yards. Yeah, O'Shaughnessy, 12 attempts, 68 yards tonight, averaging just under 6 yards per carry. Three wide receivers on this set. Struthers, short drop, looking for that out route, finds McDowell, and that is to get him up to the 43 to set up 33. McDowell sacrificing his body, could have easily ran out of bounds for about a gain of five. Decided to turn up field with all he can before he got blasted out of bounds for a pick of a seven. Mac Dre in the SFL YouTube chat with the $2 donation. I My get a dollar, man. you get a dollar. That's what's up. There we go. My man, Mac Dre, one of the more underrated defensive ends in the SFL for the Indianapolis Ramblers. What's up, my man? Third and three from the 43. That's going to be a handoff to oh. O'Shaughnessy. And, man, I, was, I don't know about that play call, Eddie. Third and three with that defense that they were putting in. That was spelled disaster. It was disaster because Vegas sniffed it out. It was strong trips. And Vegas shifted their linebackers to the offense's weak side of the field. That was disaster as soon as they said hike. Yeah, that, I mean, O'Shaughnessy can be a really, you know, menacing back, but I just in that setup and situation, I think that was the wrong call. Is that's going to be punting away to Vegas, and they're going to try to do something here to start the second half. Mm. As that's going to be taken out to the 25. Eric Price tonight been very efficient, Slowly only 12 up. attempts, but he's got 10 completions for 104 yards. Yeah, when your defense scores a touchdown for you, you don't need to, you know, have the greatest of days. But um, they're going to need them to put up some points before this game is out. They're going to win this contest. Yeah, they can't reside on they can't reside on Justin reside. <laughs> See that? <laughs> First and ten from the twenty-five. Price drops back out route, finds his target, and that's going to be a gain of six, and that's going to set up second and four. Also knocked down a, a Denver Nightwing in the process, so that's a win-win for Vegas. Yeah, anytime you can knock out a Nightwing, that's a good thing, I guess, right? You know, Mac Dre with that $2 donation, if I get a dollar and you get a dollar, what are you going to spend that dollar on, Chad? Oh, you know, that's a good question. Maybe I'll invest it. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, I mean, what else are you going to do with a dollar? I mean, <laughs> And that's going to be a handoff there to Scott Johnson. Oh. Oh, spin moves, gets a first down. And I got to tell you, man, I've been very impressed with how he's run the ball tonight. I am as well. And you just wonder if they're going to continue to dial up that play. We've seen them call it three or four times now. And if it's third and long and they run that play, he gets stopped short. John's not going to be happy. First and 10 from the 36. Nightwings maybe bringing some pressure. Price looking deep down the middle, and oh, that is intercepted. And that is going to be out to the 46, TJ Frosty there with the pick. TJ Frosty with the pick, and I kind of saw it coming because that ball was floated out there. Not one of his better passes today, and that ball took a half hour to get to the receiver. Denver comes up with it, and they got great starting field position, Chad. 30-minute <laughs> throw. And that's going to be an interception. Yeah, that, that had doom written all over it. I mean, the Nightwings defenders were all over that play. <laughs> Cliff and Allen in the chat saying that Cam is starting crypto. Better be careful what you start to invest it in. 
<laughs> Spend your money wisely. You're absolutely right. First and 10 from the 46. Ooh, Drops nice play. Back. Looking for Bailey O'Shaughnessy and gets the first down and more down to the 41. Great play call there by Stephon Forge. It was, and what I like about it, he's, a, he's got all three receivers lined up to his left. They all run intermediate routes, which forces the defense to collapse, and Bailey O'Shaughnessy is wide open in the flat. Yep, great play call there by the three-week head coach. And that's going to set up first and 10 here from the 41. Drops back, looking over the middle, and man, now you tried to make a one-handed catch. The fullback <laughs> did. Did not work, and that's going to be second down. Yeah, I don't know too many fullbacks in the SFL that can come up with that catch. One-handed. They're so busy doing curls in the offseason, I don't think they can, they're even capable of making that catch. I mean, Ari Mills is one of those guys that, I mean, Denver uses their fullback very well when it comes to the passing game. And Ari Mills has been around for quite some time. A six-season veteran in the SFL. Second and 10 from the 41. That is going to be a screen. That is going to be to O'Shaughnessy. Mm. And he's going to get the down, down to the 27-yard line. Great decision by Jane. It's a screen. He shows great patience. Doesn't just dump it to him off right away. He allows the player to develop, allows him to get outside, that the defense can not get over there in time. Easy pitch and catch. Yeah, and you know, if you every miss time it, I see Mac Dre in a chat, I think about, I would love for him to be my security guard. Because there's two guys in the alley trying to jump me, and I got Mac Dre, I know I'm okay. Well, you're going to have to wait because he's going to be my security guard for <laughs> quite a long time. And that is going to be a loss of one. Osiris with the tackle for loss to set up second and 11. Denver has called that play about six times now, Chad, and they haven't been productive once with that. Running to that weak side of the offense when you got two tight ends to your left, that's the way I'd go. Yeah, not sure what, what the thought process was behind that. would love to get a full understanding of it. Second 11 from the 27. Struthers drops back, looking over the middle, finds his target. That's a good catch there by R.E. Mills. R.E. Mills. A little bit ago. That's going to set up inside the red zone, first and 10. All right, Mills, maybe his agent heard us talking. I don't know, but he runs that route, gets out beyond the defensive line, turns his head around, picks up the ball with both hands, completes the pass, moves the chains. Ari right, Mills says, hey, I'm more than just a, a blocking fullback. Yeah, I got to tell you, if that play gets called and with that defense that it could be calling there, I mean, that could be a successful play. First and 10 from the 12. That's going to be a handle to a shot to see up the oh, middle. Block us like everywhere. Man, all over the place, and he thought he was going to get the first down, but he did not. It's going to set up second and one from the three. That was the best blocking he's got out of his offensive line all game, Chad. He actually had three, four offensive linemen ahead of him. Maybe that fourth one was the fullback, but if he cuts to his right instead of to his left, he's dancing in the end zone right now. Yeah, 15 carries for 66 yards for O'Shaughnessy tonight. Look for him to continue to get it. I think this could be a good run situation here. And it is indeed Stretch. O'Shaughnessy. Stretch run, and it's going to be in the end zone. And that is a touchdown, Nightwings. Denver, before the end of the first quarter was over with, Chad, the fans hadn't even settled to their seats yet. They barely just got their popcorn, said hi to some of their favorite concession stand members. And before they knew it, they were down 14-0. Don't look now, Chad. But we here we are in the middle of the third. They just took in a 21-14 lead, extra point pending. Yep, Denver scoring 21 pending the extra point. Unanswered points in this game so far. Good snap, good hold, the kick is up, and it is good. Denver with the first lead of the night, and I got to tell you, man, I mean, this is, I'm telling you, Denver has looked very good since they came out after Vegas scored that 14 point. Yeah, since the pick six, Denver has done a great job of responding. Gene Struthers was pulled to the sideline and said, hey, young man, we were driving. About to score a touchdown. You threw the pick six, but it's not over. It's a lot of football left. He's got his head right since then, got his head out, out of his you-know-what, and drove down the field three times for three scores. I don't know what. You're going to have to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be taken out to the 28. Man, I got to tell you, this is going to be a game that I think the Victor Valiant crew is going to be really looking forward to watching and making the highlights for. If you miss any of this action, you want to fast forward your SFL experience, check out the highlights of SFL games 
on SFL YouTube channel and on Highlight Nation provided by Victor's Valiant, YouTube's premier sports highlight maker. Subscribe to Highlight Nation and Victor's Valiant on YouTube for all your college football and basketball needs. I actually watch Victor's Valiant for a lot of the XFL highlights because I try to catch up on those games already. Yeah, uh, sorry. I, I was caught up in the play, and I thought they were coming with that stutter go again, but it was not. The receiver dropped the ball. I think that was a tackle Esbo player who dropped that. I'm not quite sure. Didn't get his number. But that easy could have been picked up and intercepted like we saw earlier today in the Houston-London game. Yeah, there was a lot of interceptions thrown in that Houston-London game for sure. Ten. Yeah, Johnny Pickler, unprecedented. Six interceptions on the game. Mm. Price oh, with a quick nice throw. Play. Look at that, and that's going to be first down. And that was like one step, throw it right on that slant route. Beautiful route there by Mason Kirby. 90Z arrow. It's a man killer. Anytime you're facing teams with man, you want that in the playbook. But they were out in zone and still completed the plans. Nice play. Yep, and arrow routes can be very effective on bump coverages as well. Absolutely. First and 10 from the 39. Four wide receivers set out of the gun. There's a fake to the running Look back, out. and he doesn't have any time at all. That is going to be a sack for Denver. Wow, Denver has silenced this crowd. You can almost hear a pin drop in this building as John Nevels beats his man, flies in on the quarterback, and slams him on his throwing shoulder. Now, this is his off-throwing hand, but nonetheless, he could have easily separated his shoulder on that tackle. John Neville's coming from the Lycans last season. This is his first season in Denver. 6'5", 265. Beast getting through the line and getting the sack. Second and 18 from the 31. Price changing up the play. Short drop. Finds his running back. Oh. Robert Johnson. He's just a spin master. As that is taken for a, just a couple yards. For a moment there, I thought this was a Whirlpool commercial the way with all those spins he was doing. I thought I was in the club, like hearing like the DJ, like <laughs> spinning the records, you know what I mean? And he so spun much... one more time. He threw me off balance. Yeah. Here it is again. It's combo inside zone. Yep, and let's see what it does here. Defensive tackle does drop back. They go deep and oh, oh, oh that was almost intercepted. Nick Kendler. And that's Kendler with the good deflection there, and Vegas is gonna have to punt it away. Nick Kendler, another long-standing member of his Denver Nightwing squad. He's been around what seems like forever. Still in this, wearing this Denver Nightwing uniform. He's probably going to retire at Nightwing. Yep, Kindler, seven seasons in the SFL, all seven seasons here in Denver, as that is going to set up Dustin McCrack here with the punt. So next week, Eddie, on S on Next Level Sports, two biggest surprises of the SFL's 20th anniversary season will meet at the historic Hive, where the 8-1 Atlanta Swarm will host the 7-2 Tulsa Desperados, with the winner likely clinching a first-round bye. Kickoff at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time for a complete oh. channel guide. Bennett in visit NLSE.com, and I'm sure that after Monday night, that will actually be Atlanta at 8-2, and two, not 8-1. <laughs> Somebody clip that and send it to the Atlanta locker room. Oh, a parody on the play. I didn't even see that. Oh. And speaking of clipping, there is a clipping call there <laughs> against TJ Frosty. And that's unfortunate. That was a nice return. I mean, hey, if I'm going to read the ad read, I'm going to take a shot. I mean, come on. I have to. And that's going to set up first to 10 here from the 13. Gene Struthers coming out again. They're going to look to take a two-score lead here, Eddie. Twins. Look for 90Z quick out. Oh, run, and there's going to be a handle to a shot of oh. doing his own little spin oh. move. As that's going to be a gain of six to set up second and four. Had he spun to the outside, Chad. I think it's He'd a foot gone. race to the end zone. He'd been gone. Yep, but mm. that inside spin was what got him. I mean, he almost broke that, too. Credit to Denver for staying patient with this run game. It has not started off very well for them, but they've picked things up since then. Yep, just averaging over four and a half yards a carry tonight. 83 yards running the ball. And that's going to be O'Shaughnessy up the middle. He's going to oh. get a first down. Oh, oh. oh, what a hit there on O'Shaughnessy. And that was Max <laughs> Jackson serving it up. 
Was that Max Jackson? It was Max Jackson. He came flying in there like a torpedo. We seen Atlanta do that last week and lay out someone and knock them out the game. Liam Hammond was. That was a similar type tackle. He said, I'm tired of not having my name called. Yeah. <laughs> and just laid the wood. First and 10 from the 26. Struthers Wide drops open. back out route tight end Mosley. And that is going to be a gain of nine as that's going to set up second and one. I need to go to the Denver school of getting your tight end involved because Jeremy Mosley is continuing to stuff the stat sheet. Right. Yeah, that was his 11th target of the night. Nine catches, 62 yards, and a touchdown. Don't Jeremy. look at this game, Will, please. <laughs> Jeremy Mosley looking very good so far. Second and one from the 35. Struthers with the handle to O'Shaughnessy, trying to get to the outside, oh. and did not find a hole. Did not. And that's going to be a loss of a yard, actually, and that's going to set up third and two. I think he spent too much time dancing, trying to hit the home run, rather than just lowering his shoulder and picking up that first down. Yeah, he was trying to do a little bit too much finesse and should have been a little bit more power. Split back formation here, third and two. Hand off up the middle to R.E. Mills. And look at that there, Eddie. R.E. Mills gets the first down. His first carry of the day leads to a Denver Nightwing first down. I'm sure Vegas was not anticipating that. Let's go. No, he doesn't run the ball very often in this season looking like so far i think he's may have may have run he's actually has run 30 times so far this season coming into the game far pro and that's gonna be a handle to o'shaughnessy oh. trying to do the spin move does yeah. not go anywhere and that's gonna be no gain i don't like that run play it takes too long to develop you got your tailback lined up on the offensive right and you're running a power play in which he's trying to follow the guard. It just takes too long to develop, and the defense collapses on him. No gain. Yeah, especially when you got to go, you know, basically on the opposite side of the field. Yep. Second and 10 from the 37. Struthers looking. Finds that out route to Logan Keel, and no nope, missed the tackle there. He's going to get a first down out to the 50. He picked, he turned on the Jets and left the defender. I couldn't catch his number standing there. Looks like he's going to have him tackle for about a gain, about seven yards. He turns around, stays in bounds, runs past him. Looks like he might have picked up another two or three yards miles per hour on that run there and picked up the first down. Yep, and Justin Rasai with the swing and a miss on the tackle. Yeah. Oh, my God. I was going to embarrass a man like that. Yeah. Not the swing and a miss. Oh my I, mean, he, I mean, he got a pick six earlier. What are, you, what are we going to say about it? <laughs> first and 10 from midfield, just under 50 seconds to go in the third quarter. Struthers finding his man, Bailey O'Shaughnessy, and that's yep. going to – he had to come back to it there a little bit. Didn't did. get it in momentum. Could have had a first down if it was in momentum, but that sits up second and four. Yeah, had he led his receiver, Bailey, there, that would have been an easier first down. But that's another play design in which they get those receivers running down the field. Even Bailey O'Shaughnessy wide open with not a defender within seven yards of him. The clock ticking away here at the third. Second and four from the 43. Mosley up top. Wide open. Wide open, but they go with Quintero there with the one-handed grab. The result is a first down regardless. It's a first down regardless, but had they hit Mosley, I think he's able to turn around and pick up about another 10 yards, Chad. Yeah, if he was able to stop on a dime there and, and turn up field, he could have had a huge game. Yeah. He was looking wide open. Mosley Strong tight end in, flex. Yep, Mosley now in the slot, first and 10 for the 38. There's a handle to O'Shaughnessy. Mm. Goes nowhere, loses a couple yards, and that's going to hit the end of the third quarter. Here in Vegas, as Denver has the lead 21 to 14. We'll be right back here on SFL on YouTube. Put your fours up. Let's go. Get your fours up. It is Vice Wars, baby. 4, 12, 68, 86 is in the chat. Chad rolling Eddie Gage here in the broadcast booth tonight. Justin Reside, once again, thank you very much for all your hard work in the stat truck. And Bailey O'Shaughnessy. Right there in Ouchtown, population you, bro, as that's going to be third and 14. Denver has got to get this play out of their playbook moving forward. They've yeah, gained okay. zero yards out of that play. Yeah, I wish we had the stats for how many 
times they've ran it and how many yards, because I guarantee there's a zero in there somewhere. About seven for negative one. There you go. Third and 14 from the 41. Big play here for Denver. Looking down the middle deep and oh, oh. almost intercepted. And I got to tell you, I thought that was going to be a pick easily. But I he was did too. Chris Maple with the with the incompletion. As soon as he let it go, I thought that was picked off. Yeah, I mean that would have. I mean, he was under through that thing by like a mile. It looked like, and that's going to set up the punt here. Looking to pin Vegas deep. Keto Vasquez there on the punt. Great punt. Great punt. And look at that. Oh, he runs it into the end zone. The head hunter there ruined that one for him. <laughs> that was Rosca Santa Cria, by the way. <laughs> you are too much today, bro. That was <laughs> what? Isn't that what they're isn't that what it's called? The head hunter? I guess I don't know. I just work here, man. Dude. <laughs> I just I'm just here. First and ten from the twenty. Out of the gun, gun a strips. There's the fake. To There's the a stutter go. Price there it is. Down the field and that is caught. And that is almost a midfield out to the 48. John Blades, the tight end with the reception. And that's not the receiver who that play normally is designed for. It's normally designed for the slot receiver running a stutter go. But John Blades, you know, he was open too. So might as well throw it to him. Yeah, John Blades, we, we talked about I mean, he's a tight end this season, but we've seen him make tons of plays as a wide receiver in his heyday. First and 10 from the 48. Price drops back, out route, finds his target, and that is going to be Blades again, I think. Nope, it looks like that's actually Mason Kirby, as that's going to be second and two. Got beat deep once, and now all of a sudden, the secondary is lined up 12 yards off the ball. Easy pitch and catch. You know, the out routes for both teams has been working very well tonight. And that's going to set up second and two from the 44. Look at this. See, this is going to be an interesting formation here. Single back. Price hey, drops back. Oh. And covers oh, he's down. Oh. He stayed in bounds. First down at the 35. I thought he was going out, Eddie. And he somehow, Scott Johnson, with the magical feet, stays in bounds. Let's see if he actually stayed in bounds. Yes, oh, he, did. he did. What a play by Scott Johnson. I'm calling for it now, Chad. Scott Johnson needs to be tested for digital PEDs the way he just made that cut. Yeah, I, I, I might have to agree with you on that. I mean, nobody is that quick on a dime like that. <laughs> and there is going to be a handoff. He's going to get rewarded with the run, and he's only going to get a gain of four on that. That's unfortunate because if Scott Johnson just remains patient and stays behind the pulling guard, he's going to pick up about 15 yards, but he did not remain patient, got out in front of him, and he had right. no one there to block the tackler. That's going to set up second and six from the 31. Ace. Price. Looking. Mm. Five oh, oh. oh! Dropped! John Blades with the drop, Eddie. John Blades just caught an amazing catch just a few moments ago. Drops an easy seven-yard hitch. And had Devin King been paying attention to the bobble, he could have perhaps picked that one up. Former Baltimore Vulture. Third and six, gun straight formation here for the Fury. Price drops back, pressure getting to him over the middle, and that oh. is tipped away. And that is going to set up fourth and six from the 31. That was a good deflection there by Neal. A good deflection indeed, but he should have picked that one off. Not sure what he was thinking about. Perhaps he was looking downfield, but Josh Neal needs to come up with that pick to keep points off the board. Josh Neal, the two-season veteran here in the SFL, and that's going to set up a field goal here for Matt Rage. 48-yard field goal attempt by Matt Rage from the right hash mark trying to keep Vegas in this game. Good snap, good hold. The kick is up, and it is good indeed from 48 as Vegas inches closer, 21 to 17. He drilled that one, Chad. That was, that was a no doubt about it. 
plenty of room to spare on that kick. Hey, don't leave this broadcast, guys, without joining our Discord server. There's so much more to do here in the SFL than just being a player. Join to check out content for teams and about the league created by the community. Participate in pickup games, play SFL Fantasy Football, and test your skills in the Survivor Pool. To join our server, visit simulationfl.net and click on the Discord icon menu. The SFL community to... And it looks like bunch formation here with the tight end at the top of that. Triple bunch. Ooh. And Gene Struthers hitting Bailey O'Shaughnessy in stride. That's a first down to the 33. And that's about the third time we've seen them call that play tonight in which they just flushed the defense out of there by running everyone deep. And meanwhile, Bailey is wide open in the flat with not a defender around him within seven yards. Wow, he just knocked that man to the turf. Yeah, he was... Yeah, I mean, there's probably a lot of frustration watching Bailey O'Shaughnessy just run all over the place tonight. First and 10 from the 33. Got one wide receiver at the bottom of the screen. Struthers looking, swing oh. pass to the running back, and what a spin! Man, that guy came flying! I think that was Max Jackson. It was, it was. Max Jackson. Man, you're seeing these 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 veteran players in Vegas. I mean, John Blades dropping an easy pass. Max yeah. Jackson flying out from California. I mean, just <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> Dude, he came from California and ended up in Indiana. Second and 10 from the 33. There's a free play. Play Struthers. action. Throw Look it deep. And he's going to hit the out route there with Quintero. And should have took an opportunity to go down the field. But let's see what the call is. Obviously, it's going to be offsides. It's going to be offsides on – Vegas, and if I'm Denver, I'm going to accept this penalty to get the extra down. And they, and they do, do indeed accept the penalty. Good call there by Eddie Gage. That's what I do. That's all you do. As <laughs> Anthony Stover there, 6'6", 315, couldn't keep himself contained, jumping off sides. Could not. Once that big guy got moving, it was impossible to bring him to get him to stop. I know how that goes. My time as a defensive end, I jumped off sides more than anybody. <laughs> Vegas may be trying to bring the heat up. Oh. back dive. That's a first down. And all along with it comes with a hit by Max Jackson. And R.E. Mills with the big play. They fooled Vegas and they fooled me too. I was just confident that was going to be a stretch run. And I'm sure Vegas was as well. Yep, R.E. Mills just sneaking in there. With some good runs, that's his second attempt of the night. Weak twins, tight end to the quarterback's left. Look for the out route there for Mosley. Drops back. I am completely oh, wrong. That ball and that's going to be intercepted. That Max is Max Jackson. Jackson there with the pick, and that's a big play there for Vegas. That was the worst thrown ball that James Struthers had tonight. He's trying to get to his fullback. He's trying to put touch on it and float it over the linebacker and just too much traffic in the area. And with Max Jackson being as seasoned he, as he is, that was his 90th career interception, I believe. I mean, let's take let's talk about that though. I mean, Maurice Lloyd doing the little bump there on Ari Mills, threw yeah. him off that route enough to get the ball to Max Jackson in the interception price. Drop back, mm. pump fake. Look, he finds his target, and that is gonna be just short of the first down. It's gonna be second and in inches. Just short. Yeah. It was close to being out of bounds, but I believe they got both feet down. Let's see if this gets challenged. And it does not look right. like it's going to. It will not. Second and inches from the 45. 535 to go in the ball game. Vegas looking to try to take the lead here late. Ace flip week, I think that is. Price, short drop. Looking, finds his receiver, little juke move there, and that's going to be a first down to the 37. And Devin King thought he had an interception, but the receiver cut back inside and caught the ball right where he just left from. There's a picture of Ron Hoff there. One wide receiver at the top of the bottom of the screen. 
There's the handle for Johnson. Oh, and, oh God! That hurt. That hurt me, Eddie. Remember that that special they used to have on ESPN where they say they would say you got jacked up. That's right. exactly what just happened on that play. Yeah, Stephon Forrest, the outside linebacker, just bringing the pain. Man. And that hurt. That hurt my stomach. Price looking. And over. Look at that play right there, Eddie. Over the head of Stephon Forrest. Yeah. Is Doug Britt making the catch there? It's going to set up third and fourth. Stephon Forrest is just showing everyone how he's great in run coverage, but not so great in pass, pass defense because the ball was thrown right next to him, and he had no idea where the ball was. Split back formation here, third and four. Just getting to the four-minute mark here in the game. Price changing the play at the line, looking for the out route, finds it. That's going to be a first down to Kirby, and the clock will stop with 3.57 to go. Pre-snap, it looked like Denver was going to press the receivers a bit and try to take away the short stuff, but they backed up out of there, and that was just as easy as the first down as you're going to see in this league. Yeah, that was a beautiful play adjustment there by Price. Seeing what that opportunity was to get the out route, makes the play call, gets the first down. First and 10 here from the 24. Ace flip. Price. Drops, mm. looking for the running back. Finds Scott Johnson. Doesn't, mm. doesn't try any spin moves that time. Just tries to burrow his way through. And that's going to be setting up second and four. For a moment there, I thought he was going to split those two tacklers and pick up extra yards. But uh, second and four, 340 left in this game. Time has started to become a factor. Yeah, I thought he was going to try to spin his way around those guys. And that is going to be a handoff to Johnson. And they're going to stop him there. Maybe gets a yard. Ron Hoff leading the way with the tackle. And that's going to be third and three, Eddie. Third down and three. The biggest third down of the game for both these two teams. All three timeouts for both teams remaining. But if you're Vegas, you got to pick up this first down. Yeah, this is a huge third down here. Just getting to the three minutes to go in the game. This could be four down territory, Eddie. Yeah. If they don't get it right. Price drops back. Looking easy. for the out route. Finds it. That's an easy pitch and catch. The clock will continue to run. First and goal on a nine. Yeah, it's not going to get much easier than that. Corner gave him about five yards of room, of cushion. Try not to get beat deep. But at this point, you're in the SFL red zone. You don't have time to play off. First oh, wow. and goal. And this Four is an wide. interesting formation here. Four wide receivers Watch the play out action. of the gun. There it is. Play there action. There it is, that play post. action. Looking. Finds mm. his man, and that's going to be down to the five. And second and goal here for Vegas. What do you do if you're John Bond here, Eddie? Well, you don't want to score too quickly, although scoring right now is important. You need seven. A six would not, as a field goal would not do it. But you don't want to leave too much time on the clock. No, and if you're, you know, my feeling is you score because that defense is yeah. going to play really well against a rookie quarterback who and hasn't really four, had three. any. Yep, he hasn't had really any game-winning drive so far. And Price dropping, looking, hmm. finds Scott Johnson. He's going to try to juke his way through, doesn't get there, and that's going to set up third and goal from the two. Yeah, for a moment there, I thought the tight end, John Blade, was going to provide a block for him to give him an escort into the end zone, but he ran right past the defense. He's like, I only catch the ball. I don't block. <laughs> I don't get paid to block. I don't get paid to block. I get paid to score touchdowns. And that is going to get it to the two-minute warning, Eddie. We are getting into a dicey situation here in Vegas. We'll be right back on SFL on YouTube. And we are back here in Silver State Stadium. Chad Rowland, Eddie Gage on the call. Justin Reside in the stats truck. Cameron Irvine doing the production. Thank you once again, Cam, for all the hard work. Third and goal from the two. Price drops back. Looking, finds it. Oh, he was out of bounds. And that was Mason Kirby who couldn't keep his foot in. And that's going to set up fourth and goal. Yeah, unable to keep his feet in bounds as the, as the quarterback let him just a bit too much. And you're right, this is fourth down territory. They got to go for it here. It's got to be. They're, I mean, you can't go for a field goal here. And they are indeed going to go for it, Eddie. Fourth yep. and goal from the two. This is what it's all about. 
Vice Wars, rivalry. Let's see what they do. Price, two wide receivers at the top of the formation. Denver looking like they might press up a little bit. Price drops back, looking in the middle, tipped away, incomplete. Turnover on downs. But this game is not over yet. Great play by the, by the defense, but don't get too happy just yet because your offense is backed up on a one and a half yard line. Great play by the defense, but wow. Talk about stepping up. I thought he was beat. He got physical at the line of scrimmage and just did not allow him to separate away from the defender. Yeah, great play there by Ron Hoff. Looking like his former all-star self there back in season 15, Eddie. And you are right. I mean, you can't really celebrate too much. No. You are backed up at the two. Power eye formation here for the Nightwings. That's a handle to O'Shaughnessy. He gets away oh. from it. Man, that was close as Vegas is going to burn their first time out. Yeah, that did not look promising as Vegas was down in the box providing run support. Even with the corners lined up on the edge, they did not want to allow the outside run. Yeah, I, I thought when I saw him bounce to the outside, I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> like, like, what's, what's going to happen here? Now, we've Second. seen him run this inside. Let's see if they still do that again here. Looks like Struthers sees something he doesn't like. He's going to change the play. Second and eight from the four. That is going to be a handoff to R.E. Mills. Oh. And he gets stopped right there at the line, Eddie. Third and eight. R.E. Mills got baptized and, and tackled <laughs> by at his legs and took away any momentum he had. Third down coming up. And he got hit so hard, he saw the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Third and eight from the four. This is a big play for Denver. Oh my god. The goodness, crowd is set. getting into it. I'm getting into it. Eddie's getting into it. Let's see what we got. Third and eight. The pressure getting to him. Struggle. That's an interception. Inside the 10. That's a big turnover for Vegas. Cannot throw the ball in the middle of the field with defenders packed inside. In, in a basketball term, the defense is pretty much packing the paint, taking away anything in the middle. I thought he was going to look outside to his tight end, Jeremy Mosley, who has been going all game long. Decided not to do so. Gene Struthers hit the panic button, Chad. And Vegas is in prime opportunity to once again steal this game. Hey, Drury was watching Struthers the entire play. Yep. And saw that play coming from a mile away. Beautiful covers there by the linebacker. First and goal from the seven. That's going to be a handoff to Scott Johnson. He's going to get a spin move and get up to about the four as that's going to set up second and four. Last time we saw Vegas in the situation, Eddie, they couldn't get anything inside the five worth going. They could not, but right now, if you're Denver, you're thinking about that Queen City week one game in which they basically stole that game away from Queen City. They got to pull all that behind them, bite down their mouthpiece, and make plays. Vegas' offense hurrying up to the line. Price, change in the play. Look for the out route, I think, at the bottom of the screen. Look out. Oh, that's going to be, oh, he just gets it off. That is incomplete intended for Kirby. Mm, Kirby with 11 targets on this game. Continue what he's doing doing all season. Man, I third and goal, you, Chad, from the four-yard line. What are you I gotta, doing? I got to tell you, I, man, I, man, that's a good situation. I don't know. I think... I mean, you got to go with, I think the out route is where you try to go. Maybe something at the bottom of the screen, hit that slant, hit that, hit that slot receiver right there that's being defended by Ron Hoff on an out route. Let's see what happens. Third and goal from the four. Looking in the middle, tipped oh. away. That is incomplete. That is fourth down. Vegas, one more shot at it. And again, there was Hoff on the play making another deflection in the red zone. Wow. Impressive play by this young man today. Shout out to Swole in the chat. Denver's goal line red zone D looking very good. It is, it is indeed. Four wide receivers set again. They're playing off, Eddie. This is kind of an interesting call. Gun quads left. Watch for 50 Z deep post. There it is. Play there action. There it is. There's the hand. There's wide the open. And that's going to be wide. Oh, he Touchdown. caught it. And he does. Crosses. Let me do my demon impression. Hollywood Boulevard. Touchdown, Vegas. Prince Wonder on the out. Play action, you need pass protection. Vegas got it. Prince Wonder delivers. I thought that play had a chance to get batted down, but the defense just could not quite get over there in time. Wow, what a great throw. I had to do my Hollywood Boulevard at least once. I mean, DeMond, <laughs> DeMond, couldn't, DeMond couldn't be here tonight, so I had to, had to make it seem like DeMond was still here in spirit. 
I had a feeling it was coming. Yeah, I, you know, you know me. That is going to set up the extra point here. And I got to tell you, though, Denver still has time. They still do. There's a snap. There's the hold. The kick is up, and it is good. So 24-3, to Vegas takes the lead here late in the fourth, just over a minute to go. And, Eddie, I mean, right now, if you're the head coach, Stephon Forge, and you're talking to Gene Struthers, what are you telling him? Keep his head in the game. Ignore that boneheaded throw you just made a moment ago to get Vegas life. You still have an opportunity to be a hero. And Vegas is going to kick this one off. As that is going to be taken just inside, and that is going to be taken to the 23. And there hasn't been much opportunities, I don't think. And we're going to take this now to SFO Studios with Cameron Irvine. Cam, take it away. Portland, no touchdowns all day, under 30 seconds to go. And Cyrus Jive hits, hits Nelson Lozano Jr. for the score. Louisiana and Portland now in overtime, tied at 16 on NLSE. Back to you guys. Wow, what a game over there on Next Level Sports. Trouble. Drops back, and he's going to get taken down. That's a sack. And that's going to set up second and 16, Eddie. Second and 16, 90 yards slants, no one open. Struthers drops back, out route, finds it. He's going to get out of bounds, and that's going to be third and eight from the 25. Third and eight from the 25. Great decision to go out of bounds here to stop the clock. He was looking for his main man, Jeremy Mosley, deep down the middle. He was covered like a blanket. His Raleigh Quintero on the out to stop the clock. Third and eight coming up. This is a big spot here. The Silver State Stadium crowd getting into it. Gun straight, third and eight. Struthers, high snap. Got Looking Mosley. down the middle, and he's got the tight end wide open. As Mike Daggs will say, hashtag throw it to the tight end, and Vegas takes a timeout. Same route they ran on the previous play, but they did a great job covering Mosley. This time he gets out behind the defense, catches Max Jackson lacking, peeking into the backfield, threw it over the top, first down. Man, Mosley has just been a force all night. 10 catches for 82 yards and a touchdown. Hmm. Don't remind just, me. Just very, very impressive. Will Todd, do not watch this game. First and 10 from the 49. Gun straight once again. Struthers. Pump fake. Looking over the middle. Man, what a throw to McDowell. Ah. As that's going to get up to the 35. And Denver's moving. 30 seconds to go. Gun straight goal, formation right? once again. Does he spike it or does he go? He's going to go. Look at the out route. Finds his target. That is Logan Keel, and Denver's going to use their second timeout. So they're on a Vegas 30-yard line. You'd like to get a few more yards to ensure your better chance of a field goal, but you got to be very careful with the football here and not commit a mistake like you did on the previous possession. Yeah, you got to make the decision here with 18 seconds left. Are you either going to try to take a shot in the end zone or are you going to just try to play it safe and try to get the three points and go into overtime? Let's see what Split, they do. Flip, flip, pro, 50 tight end seam. I'm calling it now. There you go, Eddie Gage. Oh, with they the didn't call. do that. They did not do it. And oh, man, that oh. was not a good throw at all. Riley Quintero, and that's going to be third and four. The best thing he did was throw that ball low toward the ground where either his receiver was going to catch it or no one was going to catch it, but that was a hospital pass because had he caught that ball, he would have got sent straight to the hospital. Yep, he would have, in the words of T. Roy Gaines, he would have been in the shadow realm. <laughs> Third and four from the 30, gun straight. Got to be careful with the football. Got to be very careful indeed. 90 all slants is the call. Over the middle, finds his man, and that's down to the 15. And the clock is going to continue to run, Eddie. Smart, that's a... smart. Let it click down about three seconds. There you go. And there it is. Denver's going to take that final time out here. Three seconds to go to set up for the field goal. As that is going to bring out the the 21st overall pick in this past draft. The rookie, mm. Yay Varek, to tie this game up. Yay's going to try to tie this ball game up and probably the biggest kick field goal attempt of his SFL career. Yeah, it's got to be the biggest one so far. 14 of 17, looking to become 15 of 18. 
John Way is the holder. 32 yards out. Can he do it? No oh, low snap. snap. And the kick is up, and it is good. And, Eddie, we got extra football, baby. We got extra football. But for a moment there, that looked like disaster. But the rookie stayed composed. You know how hard it is as a kid? I've never kicked footballs, but I've heard about it in practice all the time. Anytime it's a bad snap, they got to sit there and pause. It throws it the whole time and off. But Ye stayed patient, stayed with it, got the ball off, and we got overtime. The only thing I've ever kicked kickballs, or I tell people to kick rocks. Get your fives up. Get your fives up in the chat, everybody. Two games right now in overtime. Portland, Louisiana in overtime as well. So that's kind of a rarity. Yep. Rarity just like the pony. I don't think I've ever seen two games in the SFL in overtime at the same time. I, I'm trying to think if I have or not. I don't know. That, that's kind of interesting. Maybe the uh, SFL stat gurus in the world will tell us if they've ever seen one or not. But Denver is going to get the ball first, Eddie. Let's see if they can get some starting, some good starting field position to start this drive. And that is going to be taken from about the one yard line. As there's a spin move there by McDowell. He holds on to the ball. That's the most important thing. I remember at the convention a couple of seasons ago, Harris fumbled the kickoff return in, o in OT and lost that game. He was heartbroken. That was down in Houston, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Yeah, but he. I'm surprised he didn't end up on the floor in that convention, too, after that. I think he might have. <laughs> he might have been. <laughs> I know uh, fullback Aaron Alexander was laying on the floor after London beat him, but that's the only one I remember on the floor. First and 10 from the 23. Split back formation here for the Nightwings. That's going to be a hand to Shaughnessy, and that's going to be in the backfield. A.K. Jones with the tackle for loss. A.K. Jones with his second tackle this ball game, none bigger than that one. You want to try to keep Denver behind the chains, and in second and ten, they've done just that. Yep, that was actually A.K.'s first tackle of the night. Second. And a second tackle of the night. Couldn't have came at a better time. Tied in flex there in the slot. That's going to be a handle to O'Shaughnessy with the spin move, and he's only going to get a gain of a couple as that's going to set up third and eight. Third down and eight, and thus far in overtime, Vegas defense has stood tall. Yep, and they're going to have to stand tall right here. Third and eight from the 25. Gun straight formation here for the Nightwings. X Jackson, four yards off the line of scrimmage. Struthers drops back, looking deep down the middle and overthrows Ooh. his tight end. And that's going to be fourth down for Denver. He had his man. They caught Max Jackson four yards off the ball, looking for 90-yard slants. But instead, they were going with the tight end down the deep middle. But he got bumped off his route, threw the timing off, and they're going to have to punt this ball. Had they completed that pass, Mosey might have still been running, Chad. Yeah, he might have because, I mean, he had one defender maybe to beat, and that was it. Man, I got to tell you, this is crazy. When you look at those stats, Vegas only with 252 yards total of offense. Total today. offense. And they got 24 points. And he's going to try to get something, and he gets nothing, as that's going to be set up at the 43. So Eric Price is going to come out. Vegas with an opportunity here. Price looks good so far, 25 of 36, 220 yards. He is, but this offense has been pretty much in containment since uh, that 14 nothing lead. They did score another touchdown in the field goal since then, but they need to be a bit more productive. They're going to win this game. They got good starting field position, though. They do have real good starting field position from the 43-yard line. That is going to be a hand off to Scott Johnson. He tries to eke his way through, but he only gets a gain of a couple. Yeah, they ran that play probably five times now, and Scott Johnson has not been able to benefit off of it. Yep. 8 p.m. music is unrivaled music to bring your stories to life, inspiring every production with the world's most robust and constantly refreshed music collection. State of the art technology and world class customer service. 8 p.m. music is the official soundtrack of the Simulation Football League. Visit 8 p.m. music.com. Price drops back. Looking over the middle, finds his target. That is actually dropped. Dropped. Jackson Roberts, the backup tight end, could not keep a hand on it. Bang, bang play. He was not able to secure the football as he was getting hit. 
Ball falls to the turf. It's going to bring up a big third down and eight. Yeah, let's see what the Nightwing defense could do. They've played pretty well in this second half. Gun straight formation here for the Fury. Price drops back, looking deep over the middle, and he Ooh. finds his man. And that's a first down to the 34. Wow, I was surprised he was able to hold on to the ball. Doug Brigham hadn't called his name in a while. Denver had third down and eight, unable to convert. Vegas with third down and eight, calls on their main man, Doug Britton, to move the chains. Yep, I mean, TJ Frosty was right there. Right to possibly there. Possibly break up the play, but Doug Britton with a six catch of the night, over 100 yards now for Doug Britton on the night. And it's also going to put them in pretty much in field goal range. Yep, they probably need just a first down to really confirm oh. things. And what a play by the defense of Denver, as that was Igor Barbatov there with the big tackle for loss. Igor Barbatov has been around this Denver Nightwing organization as well for quite some time. Six seasons now in the league, three of them with Denver. Yeah, but that was a big play, Eddie, because that kind of takes you out of field goal range a little yeah. bit. And that's a handoff to Scott Johnson. He might have put him back into it, though. <laughs> put him right and, back into it. And, that, I mean, maybe just outside. I mean, Matt Rage is a good kicker. I think he could hit it from there. And I think he can, too. Third down and eight. Let's see how aggressive right. Vegas gets. I know they like to throw the ball deep. Let's see if they remain consistent or if they remain consistent. Uh -oh. oh, here it comes. Play action, 50Z deep post. And there Denver has is. not stopped this play all day. And they're in that combo inside zone, Eddie. Yep. And there's the play fake. Oh. And they're going to get to him. And you're going to be out of field goal range, Eddie. Wow. Look at that. John Nevels with the sack. Big time players make big time plays. And that's what John Nevels did right there. Lowered his shoulder, put his head to the ground, got low. They always say in football, low man wins. He remained low, got past the guard, made the sack, and now they're going to force this punt away. Look out! It all oh, it was blocked! Oh, my gosh, Eddie. Denver's defense is coming up third down with the big sack, fourth down here with the block punt, and they are in great field position. Great starting field position for Gene Struthers and his offense, and Gene, who made a boneheaded play to get Vegas back in this game, oh has yet another chance, Chad, to become a hero. Those of you joining us from Next Level Sports, you're missing a good one so far. 24-24 here in overtime. Tied in flex formation here for the Nightwings. Struthers, short drop, looking for the out route, finds his man, and that is Riley Quintero, Quintero with a gain of five. Yeah, he actually had Logan kill to the outside. On the other side, he actually looked him off. He looked dead in his eyes. He was open, too and decided to throw the ball instead to Riley Quintero. Yeah, like we talked about all game long, Eddie, them out routes for both sides are working very well. The defense is not really ready for it. What's not? One wide receiver set at the top of your screen. Weak joker. And that is going to be a handoff to O'Shaughnessy, and he is stopped in the backfield. Big tackle there, Day Drury. It's a good thing that Day Drury made that tackle because had he not... I think Bailey would have been gone. Yeah, he had a lot of green behind him. That's for in, sure. This is a big third down here. Well, behind the defender is what I was trying to say. Is that <laughs> Third down and eight. This is a big third down here. Gun straight formation for the Nightwings. From the 45. Got Mosley. Oh, and he's he got a woman open. Logan Keel gets the first down, Eddie. Great play there by Gene Struthers. And perhaps... Gene just wanted to secure the first down, but to me, I didn't have the best look at it, but it looked like he had Jerry Mosley open deep. Well, and I think Eddie, I mean, just judging, I think three interceptions tonight, he's probably looking that route off. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to go for something safe. First and 10 from the 36. Single back in the backfield. Struthers, short drop. Looking short Ooh. in the middle. Finds Riley Quintero. That's another first down, and Eddie... Denver's in the field goal range. They are, but it's, I mean, we've seen Vegas in field goal range and blow it, so don't get too comfortable just yet if you're a Nightwing fan. No, you definitely want to try to get as much yards as possible. And it's going to be first and 10 here from the 24. 
Flip back formation. One wide receiver on top and bottom. That is going to be a handoff to the fullback. Oh, he mills, and he gets a good gain out of that one. That's going to set up second and three. Second and three from the 17, and I would be shocked if this ball leaves James Strether's hands unless it's intended for a fullback or his tailback, Bailey O'Shaughnessy, at this point. Oh, and they're going to bring out the kicker bring, right now. Yep, they're going to do this now, Eddie. Second Yay. and three. Verity with the biggest crick of his rookie season. He already hit the field goal to tie the game. Let's see what he does here. Good snap, good hold. The kick is up, and Vice Wars is over. Denver with the victory here, the upset over the Fury. Sir, I mean, I mean, I'm sorry. Yes, he hit the field goal. Denver's gonna win this ball game. I'm, I'm so far, I'm so sorry, yes, it failed fans. Good job, Yay Verdi, kicking that game winner. And with the ice in his veins, the rookie kicker, the 21st overall selection, Yay Verity with the game winner. And what a game this was, Vice Force. This is what the Vice Force needed, Eddie, yeah. to get up in the upper echelon of all the rivals. Yeah, it's been a blowout the past few seasons since Jimmy retired one way or the other, but primarily it's been in Vegas' favor as of late. But, uh, these games, I mean, you can always expect a close game anytime it's a division rival, particularly Vice Wars. They take this this uh, rivalry personal, both teams do. And today, Denver came out on top. Yeah, and I got to tell you, I mean, Gene Struthers in his rookie season, I mean, he had three picks and only a touchdown, but he made some really good throws when he needed to in big situations, Teddy. He did, and Cliff Allen can appreciate it because he's in the SFL YouTube chat just as happy as Ye did that he got that game-winning kick opportunity. Yep, and Bailey O'Shaughnessy, 27 carries for 85 yards, two TDs. He was a big-time force here for this Nightwing offense. He was. I mean, they 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 had a, a number of players come up and make big plays today, whether it was Jeremy Mosley, Raleigh Quintero, a bunch of guys came through. Bailey O'Shaughnessy didn't have one of his better games, but it's been improving over what he had recently. He got the offense started off on the right foot with that big 34-yard run early. And Denver comes into Vegas, shocks this crowd, and comes up with the victory. And I'll tell you what, that's going to make a big situation in the playoff picture here because Vegas was, you know, they, I mean, with the win, I mean, they would have moved back into the lead in the West and back into a top four seed. Not this time. Denver coming in playing spoiler against a division rival. Yeah. And I mean, Denver obviously being eliminated, they could come and play spoiler. But if you're Vegas, I mean, what does this do for your push for the playoffs? I mean, you're already pretty much in, I think, with seven wins, but eight. Well, with eight. But what do you do in this situation? I mean, excuse me, I'm sorry, they have know? seven wins. But yeah, you're right. I mean, they're, they're on the verge of making the playoffs regardless, I think. But they have to do the same thing that Arizona is doing. They got to just stay the course. Don't let this loss hurt you. You know, just get back in the, in the lab and continue what you've been doing all season. Yeah, but, I mean, Aris, or Las Vegas has looked really good all season long. I mean, Denver just coming in. I mean, these two teams know each other so well. You never know what's going to happen. Let's take a look at the player of the game, Eddie, and that's who I figured it was going to be, Bailey O'Shaughnessy. Bailey O'Shaughnessy, those two touchdowns probably got him to play the game not. But, wow, credit to this Denver offense coming in here in overtime biting down in their mouthpiece despite that late turnover late to get Vegas back in the game get into OT and come out of here with a victory for Justin Reside I'm Chad Rowland Eddie Gage sign us off my man Arizona I left y'all I embarrassed y'all last week I had to come back into the locker room and apologize for that lackluster performance we gave in Baltimore last week we gonna learn from this y'all I always am I'm gonna keep grinding until they tell me I can't grind anymore this train don't stop. We're going to keep moving. We got a great game next week. Opportunity to come back against Charleston and Vegas to close out the season. I'm sorry y'all let y'all down, but we're going to keep it moving. Let's go. All right. Well, thank you once again. Good night, SFL.